Hey guys, Sonny here, back with another guide for Black Desert Online. And today we're taking a look at buffs, focusing mainly about PvE. And there seems to be a lot of questions and also misunderstandings about which buffs to use when you're out grinding. So I figured we'd clear it all up today. Let's get to it. Guys, don't forget that until August 16, we still have the content creator code running. So if you are buying acorns or packages, do not forget to use code biceps at checkout support your local content creators. All right, guys, so here we have a couple presets. I'll go over them quickly. And then at the end of the video, I'll, I'll have a bit more theory and explanation about like this stuff and showing you some numbers and everything. But if you're just looking for a quick cheat sheet, then here it is right at the start of the video. So number one is your PVE preset. This one right here is your, your cookie cutter uh, set that you're looking for whenever you're going out and grinding. Uh, you got your villa buff it's extremely good you should get it a uh, simple cron meal and then a frenzy draft getting the uh, the corrupted frenzy draft gives you five more ap it's definitely worth it if you either can make them yourself or not just buy them then on top of that we got the church buff we got bravery and blessing absolutely great they last for a long time several hours this is the setup that i go out when i've just got hit mobs and get some silver your cookie cutter pvp setup is Somewhat similar to the cookie cut PvE, we're again using the body enhancement villa scroll. This time, you of course are going to go with exquisite crown meal, giant draft, and then still your two church buffs. There's been a lot of people asking about my PvE elixir rotations when I've been out grinding the really hard in game spots, so I figured I would include it here. Now, quick disclaimer some of these potions are not as needed, and also depending on the spot. If you're doing group grinding, then of course you want to make sure to share these buffs with your party members and I will link an uh, image in the description of the distribution that we used in my group for Orleans um, so you can always use the same if you want to. One quick note about elixir rotations which we're getting into now is a question about using normal elixirs versus party elixirs and uh, the TLDIs always use party elixirs. Now the reason for this is it takes two regular elixirs to make one party elixirs. Two regular elixirs is eight minutes each, so that's 16 minutes of total buffs. And a party elixir is 15 minutes. However, whenever you're making a party elixir, you have an extremely high chance of double proccing. So realistically, while making your 16 minutes worth of elixirs into party, you are looking at about 25 minutes of buffs for those two elixirs on average. So most definitely make them into party elixirs always to get the most out of your potions now let's look at the actual full uh, pve list uh, here we again of course using the villa buff we're using simple cron meal and for pve you're looking pretty much at like max ap uh, high damage of course there are some exceptions if you're over the ap soft caps um, but we'll cover that a bit later so here we're running perfume of courage uh, endless frenzy strong draining brutal perforation uh, and uh, brutal death elixir now with the perforation and death those two are not mandatory they are optional since they don't scale that well uh, because they're doing a flat amount of damage um, then we're using of course lethal assassination sharp detection advanced concentration whenever we need the accuracy uh, grim souls reaper strong shock or capping out of crit depending on our crystal setup this might be needed it might not be lethal destruction remarkable mill uh, strong life and steel defense and of course we're still using our church buffs here but now we're also throwing in a house buff it lasts for three hours when you get the good ones and they are most most definitely worth it uh, here we're going to go with the ap but you should always check your ap caps and also your accuracy you might get away with not using this, but maybe you need accuracy depending on where you're grinding, or you could go with something else like survivability for those new uh, lantern spots, the daycare spots. You probably want to be going with some uh, DR or maybe evasion house buff for those spots specifically. I've also been getting, of course, a lot of questions about crypt and the setups to run there since your crystals and everything has been changed since I did it. So um, we do have here a list of also your potions and stuff to use when you're in Crypt. And this is a bit more special uh, because at Crypt of Thrusting Thoughts, you need a ton of accuracy, 
also need AP, but you also want to get some resistance and stuff like that. So here we're still running the same uh, potions, exact same Elixir rotation with all we need there. We still have the villa and we have the church. However, this time we're running a Calx Elixir. It's going to give us resistance. This is very important. And then we are running the Exquisite Cron Meal. Uh, the Exquisite Cron Meal is actually super good here. You would preferably run simple also for the monster damage reduction. However, Exquisite gives you a lot of accuracy, which is very needed for Crypt. And it also gives you some resistance. So for the crystal setup to cap out your stun and KD resistance, you need to be running Exquisite Cron Meal just for the 100% resist. And that will give you a lot more survivability than the damage reduction on simple Cron. This right here is the setup you're most likely going to run when you're going to Crypt. So you might be asking yourself, how do you get all the elixirs and the draft and everything for, for these buffs? Well, most of them you can just buy on the marketplace. I recommend doing that, especially for your frenzies and giants and stuff like that. It's a lot of work making them yourself compared to just buying them. And oftentimes it's going to be a lot cheaper just buying them as well. However, uh, when you come into the full elixir rotation, it does become a bit more tricky because a lot of the potions are sold out with hundreds of thousands of bit on them, making it extremely hard to get them on the marketplace. So if you're looking to find out the recipe to maybe over time get in and make them yourself, then my suggestions is right here, BDO Lytics. I'm gonna link this in the description down below as well. You can go up here and let's say you're looking to make detection elixirs. So you just type in detection and then you can find them down here. You also look at them here for the different stuff. You see the items, but I like this one where I can see all the different items you need. And then you can click and you can see all the sub items needed for all of the storms and then the tyrant blood for that and everything. It's super good. You can find all the items you need and the recipes for them. There are a couple of tricks I want to tell you about already about some of the items throughout here that you might want to look into. And it is the traces. Start getting your equation notes going, put workers on them right away, put on some goblin workers if you can, get them working because down the road you might need these traces to make your potions yourself. Also, when it comes to fruit, it's a really good idea getting into some farming. It's probably the best way of getting the fruits is just doing farming and harvesting the right crops and breeding the right plants to then give you the correct fruits that you'll need to make the good elixirs as well. So I would start doing that already. Uh, there are some stuff like truffles for detection where you also have to go out and gather yourself specifically when you get to that point. Uh, they are very rare and very specific locations. So look up a guide for those. There are plenty of them. There are some on YouTube and of course, Rumby Green and Black Desert Foundry has some great stuff as well. Right, guys. So let me show you a bit of the reasons for what I'm saying here with the different buffs. A lot of people seem to have a misunderstanding about the value of AP in Black Desert. AP is extremely potent. Now, a lot of you have probably heard about uh, the AP soft caps and stuff like that, but do not underestimate AP. Just because some of the most in-game builds and spots use specific setups like Exquisite Cron Meal uh, for PvE, it doesn't mean that you should use it as well. Uh, whatever works for specific cases with specific gear because of caps, it's a bit complex, but it doesn't mean it is applied generally. So with my gear, I actually use um, Exquisite and um, Giant Draft whenever I'm grinding Trolls. It's one of the highest AP spots in the game, but it's super niche and it's super unique to that because of all the gear that I have and also because of the class I play but also because it's being an LVS spot, so the AP soft cap is only 5%. It's extremely, it's the lowest there is. All right, so let me show you here why a lot of people make huge mistakes thinking that niche cases apply to general applications. Um, I see it time and time again in my stream, people come in and asking like, oh, why are you using this and that? And I use symbol all the time as well. And people keep asking, what about the percentages? Don't need the crit, don't need the bag attacks. Raw AP is powerful in video. And let me show you a case here. So this is the two same builds. Uh, it's part of my gearing guide. So I just took a, a, a more 
lower AP uh, threshold. We got some black stars on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we have my budget crystal setup. My crystal guide will be in the description on both setups. So everything is equal. As you can see, there's no damage difference here. First off, where am I right now? Well, I'm on gamoth.com. Whenever you go into your uh, gear planner, you can go over here and you can say PVE damage calculator on the left side. And this is where I'm at right now, right? So let's see the difference. Let's go in and just pick the standard, a uh, simple cron meal and frenzy. Now let's go over here on the other one and let's pick what I keep hearing people talking about, uh, exquisite and uh, giant draft because of the percentage multipliers on them, the critical damage and the back attack, right? And for a lot of cases here, you can go in, you can adjust your uh, percentage back attack. And realistically, for most grind spots, you're not getting 100% back attacks. There are very few grind spots where you will get 100% back attacks, and even then it's probably just 90, 95%. So a 50% back attack here, especially with the grind spots that you'll be grinding with this kind of gear, is a very generous percentage of back attacks. But you can play around with the number yourself and you can take a look. On top of that, we've added uh, accuracy into the mix. Uh, but as you'll see, you'll probably hit your 100% hit rate, even though we don't have anything special here. There is a bit more accuracy because of the, the cron meal over here, but you'll see we have 100% hit rate in a lot of places. Now, check this out. So with this kind of gear, one of the places you might be looking at would be Elvia Ox and maybe Underwater Sequire. So let's actually scroll down and see what is the damage difference between these two just with this. And if we go down here and we look at Orc Camp, we do 72 or 76 are in 2% less damage. That's a lot of damage. And it is because how AP scales, but also depending on the spot. So the DR of different spots of the mobs will affect how the AP then scales into it. So you should use this and be aware of these kind of things. But if you're looking for the cookie cutter, you will be safe with Frenzy a lot of the times and simple cron meal. Now you can also look at some other stuff like Underwater Sequire, you do a lot more damage actually. 3.8 is a lot of damage in BDO. So you can imagine how much these numbers are here. 76 and 32% at Sornal and 43. It's crazy numbers. Uh, but even doing 3.8% um, more damage with this, that's also not factoring in your survivability. And what a lot of people forget is you taking less damage and you being more healthy with your damage reduction on simple, but also the sustain on frenzy, it means that you can deal more damage yourself. You don't have to use your healing abilities all the time. You can be a bit more aggressive. You can do more, more super armor instead of front guard. So you can do more damage as well when you are more healthy. So this is a huge difference in performance at these crime spots. And you might be looking and be like, oh, well, you do more damage at Quint. Well, this is one of the things you need to be aware of with this, is the scaling with your damage. So you won't be able to go with Quint with this gear because you just don't have enough. So the reason it actually deals a bit more damage is because you have no damage. So you're getting bottomed out on the AP. So let's see what happens here if we add 150 AP to both sides. Then suddenly we actually have enough damage to start hitting the Quint Hill mobs. And you'll see we now deal 31% less damage. So the only reason I was dealing more damage was because we were basically dealing zero damage before. And then the multipliers helped out. But you would never be able to grind that spot. So play around with these kind of things here and, and get an idea about it. And I should also quickly mention that if you look over here, then now this is actually better because now we are over the AP caps. So there is some things, there is some truth to the exquisite and, and giant. But it's really only for Elvia spots if you are over the AP cap with those buffs instead of the Frenzy. So that's pretty much the exception. There's of course a few other uh, like uh, Gyphon and stuff like that where you can get 100% back attacks. Use this tool and make sure you're using it right. But this is more for end game. Most people, probably you watching this right now, you will be completely correct in just using frenzy 
and simple cron. Hopefully this explains some and shed some lights on the misunderstanding. And I know a lot of people are under the impression that percentages are really good in BDO. They are great, but they ain't all that. Guys, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, of course, you can always drop a comment, but you can also stop by the stream at twitch.tv slash Prime. See you all in the next one.